Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 25 online game. Today we got the Dallas Cowboys and the team I'm rolling with the Indianapolis Colts and for some reason Trent Richardson didn't make it on the rosters last week when they did the roster update even though he got traded before they did the roster update. But um, this week they made sure they got Trent Richardson on the Colts so I figured you know why not let's get a first look at Trent Richardson on the Colts. But before we get more into uh, this game. I didn't explain what I showed earlier in the video, during the intro or whatever. You saw the fan of the day thing. That's something I did, well, Man 13, that for some reason I stopped doing, which I don't know why, because I thought it was really cool to just give a shout out to somebody who I know has been supporting me. Just my way of just acknowledging people. So, we're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to doing fan of the day like we did before. And I might give people fan of the day twice, because I don't really have a great memory of who I gave it to the first time. So, if you get a fan today twice, uh, cool for you. Just please don't complain about in the comments if you realize someone gets it twice. It'll happen. But, um, you know, over time, hopefully, I can give it to a lot of people. A lot of subscribers that come in now, came in, bef been with me for a while, new subscribers and all that. So, um, that should be cool. And a big sequence happens here. A lot of stuff happens really fast. First, I accidentally throw this interception. And this was, that was supposed to be a lot pass, but for some reason, it bolted. I just t tapped B and all of a sudden, I bolted. If I lobbed it, I'm pretty sure Haver Bay would have beaten Carr. But since I didn't, he ended up getting the pick there with Carr and his long arms. But next play, he throws an interception to Vontae Davis. So, right back, we get the ball here. Good stuff. And before that, he punted the ball from the 40-yard line, which is something you barely see. And uh, I did not expect that. 14-3 at the 40, he punted the ball. This is a sub game, but still, I mean, that is kind of shocking. But um, whatever he felt like doing. I guess he did get the interception after that. And we'll get Trent Richardson two plays later after his interception. Richardson is gone. So Trent is looking pretty good in the Colts jersey right here. Dodging Durant and getting in the end zone for a 71-yard scamper. That looks good. I like the way Trent Richardson is playing so far. But, um... Yeah, so that's that, and the next thing I need to talk about real quick is, you might not be able to tell it from the way I'm talking, because I'm talking pretty normally, but I have had a pretty bad fever the past two days, hence why I didn't do a video yesterday. I almost didn't do a video today, but I figured let me get one out to you guys, so this is it right here, and you know hopefully it turns out well so uh you see we got a touchdown early on now he gets a touchdown right here third down and 13 just a defensive collapse here we give up the uh, just some wide open area there to cole beasley nice throw by him to find the open guy in the seams there but uh, at the same time bad defense on us to give that up so the game ties up here and like i briefly mentioned before this was a subscriber game and Oh, uh, yeah, so, you know, naturally when I play against subs, you know, sometimes I might test stuff out since this is an unranked game. Sometimes I'll just, like, you know, like the wide receiver screens. That's something I've been doing a little bit. And there, 3 down 21, that's a little bit of a big time mess up by him, actually. He clicked on, and he hit me before I got the ball, so that's defensive pass interference. He probably would have been better letting the CPU do it, but um, that's hindsight speaking. And here, Kobe Fleener, he can't catch. That's pretty obvious. You've seen, like, a number of games between preseason and actual NFL games where Kobe Fleener gets nothing thing done but Trent Richardson is getting stuff done I don't know how good he's actually gonna be in a Colts jersey I'm not exactly optimistic that he's gonna get things done but um in this game so far he's looking good two rushes for a ton of yards and I'm running another screen but um at least they're working man at least they're working but um yeah what do you call that throw I just threw to uh, I, I almost threw to a cowboy there that was one of the things I tested out I tried to throw just like bolt it in there try to fit it in the seams and that definitely did not work here this read option should have worked for a touchdown but Reggie Wayne inexplicably just decides he's not gonna block so that was cool third down and one he leaves the flats wide open to the fullback everybody rolled out right I let the fullback go left got the touchdown here I ran the same exact play and it didn't really work out because usually when you run the same play twice, you know, there's like a less percent chance that you'll get it going, especially a play like that. Wasn't really like a mind fucking play or anything. It was just roll out to the right, fullback goes to the left. So he had that covered. But next play, we got a touchdown. We ran with Richardson and we got into the end zone and we got the lead back as we end, we're like midway in the second quarter here. And I'm feeling okay about the way the defense played. Our one stop, or two stops, one came off the interception, the other came because he punted on fourth and three that he might have been able to get. Third down and eight, we got him in a nice, bad situation here for him, and we get a sack, pretty much a coverage sack as Franklin uh, tackles Romo there, and he punts the ball fourth and very long. There's no doubt about punting it in this situation, but that gives me a chance to grab some more points on this drive, turn it into a two-possession game, and look at Trent. Trent, one minute to beat, but he cannot shake Bruce Carter, but still a great game. We 
run hard up next play he brings the house we expect him to bring the house so we do play action and we throw a beautiful pass here to ty hilton nice lob pass on the wheel right there hilton beats him with his speed and we are in the end zone there just beautiful execution there you run it you do the play action and you know what they say the running opens up the play action game and that's how it works right there. That is like a like textbook example. And here, that's pretty much a textbook example of how to cover up the screen. Not exactly perfect. You see me pick off a few of those, but that was pretty good in itself. Third down to six. He throws it into coverage, but does not get it. Drop pass. Fourth down, he makes a nice play here. Wasn't playing the out route to Dez, and he got the out route to Dez there. So that was just good play call in here. Uh, that's what we want him to do. But unfortunately, injury timeout comes. Because there's only a minute seven left. We want him to kill some clock since we're not giving him the deep ball. That injury timeout did hurt. Next play, he throws it to the tight end, who does not get both feet in bounds. I believe that was Escobar. Might have been Witten. I'm not sure. But that brings up another third down. That's kind of been the story of this game. A lot of third downs, but this time he does get it. I played that one route too hard. He got the other route coming across there. I believe Miles Austin. And at least I made the tackle, but that's not good enough. And there, nobody makes the tackle on Miles until Miles gets all the way to the 14 yard line. Next play, Romo just hits Witten up. I try to bring a blitz. Did not work. Then he. Uh, I'm not sure he called. He might have called a timeout there, but he ends up hitting Witten in the corner, so it's pretty much not really mattering too much. As Witten gets a touchdown there, and that was big because now he gets a seven point deficit, but we're going to make that a ten point deficit real quick there. Big throw, just a clutch throw by there by Andrew Luck. And we're not in field goal range yet, so we throw this drag route to Kobe Fleener. That is field goal range for a lot of kickers, but not for Adam Vinatieri. And this might not even be field goal range. Look at it. Ooh, just got it over the crossbar there. So that was a great drive there. Just a beautiful pass there by Andrew Luck to Fleener. And here you see some of my predictions for week four. I got the Seahawks over the Texans. No question about it. The Texans look pretty sloppy. I got Bears over Lions. That could be a close game. That's who I got. I got my G-Man going all in four, unfortunately. Redskins over Raiders. That might be a toss-up. And um, you never, I don't know what the hell is going to go on with the Redskins, but I mean, they almost turned it around against the Lions without Reggie Bush. I think they could do it against the Raiders who might not be playing with Pryor. The Sunday night game, I got, I got New England. I think LN is a better team, but I think New England can win the game, even though they're on the road. It's just one of those games that you just feel like Tom Brady's going to pull out of his ass, you know, like the Buffalo game he pulled out of his ass, even though Buffalo is not the same caliber as um, Atlanta, but still. And then they could do it. And there, I thought Andrew Luck could throw an open out route there, but apparently he couldn't do that. So we punt the ball here. Pretty good chance for him to try to get back in this game. Any score will do to make it a one-possession game. But on Monday night, the battle between two, three, and old teams, I got the... Saints coming up over the Dolphins. The Saints are going to be, those fans are going to be rocking that dome there. And that's a nice throw there. Beautiful throw there. Romo throws it. Just, Romo's been throwing a few dots in this game. This time, Romo can't really throw a dot, so he just takes off. But, um, yeah, the, the dome is going to be rocking there uh, there in Louisiana. So, I got the Saints being the Dolphins. Not saying the Dolphins are a bad team, because clearly they showed against the Falcons. They got what it takes. And Tannehill showed that, you know, he's not a half-assed quarterback. He might be pretty good. Especially on that game-winning drive. That was a great drive there by Tannehill. And I got the Jets winning, man. The Jets going 3-1 and one to start the season. Who the hell saw that coming? I could be wrong, but I don't know. That's a toss-up game because that's a game between two pretty good defenses and two teams that like to run the ball. So, um, I don't know. It depends on how the Jets' D-line plays because that Jets' D-line can be pretty dominant. I mentioned it last week with the guys they have up there. So, that game, who knows what can happen. And then, um, I got Glennon losing his opening start. And, ooh, Hayward Bay making them all miss. All the Cowboys hit the ground real quick. Hayward Bay going to hit up the end zone real quick. What a nice throw. That throw to the post route, I've been doing that last year. I've done it this year. Whenever someone brings in all-out blitz, it's easy to throw that post route. And the rest of it was all me. Just making people miss with Hayward Bay. Got a guy juked out the way. Dodge Brandon Carr's tackle attempt. And just when he got back in the game, when a touchdown to make it a three-point game, it took me one play to suck all the momentum, all the momentum right out of his team. And here we get a big sack there on Romo. Second down and 21. Second down and very, very long. Romo looking to go deep. But it's almost intercepting. Laurel Landry had it in his hands. But then he decided to tackle Miles Austin, which he injured Miles Austin, so it wasn't a total loss. We got Miles Austin off the field. But third down and 21, he takes a shot right at me. And 
I mean, my presence there probably impacted the throw because, you know, you'll see it a few times. You're there, and the quarterback will automatically try, try to throw it away from you. Like, the AI will try to move it away from you. So, the throw was behind him, and Williams just had to make a spec catch there. And Williams is just not capable of that. And one thing I probably shouldn't be doing in this situation is doing those kind of runs with Andrew Luck at the start of the fourth quarter. I've been doing that all game, those, like, runarounds like that because he can take a hit and easily fumble the ball. I'm pretty glad he hasn't fumbled the ball so far yet. Like I said, unranked match, sometimes you goof around, but... That's something that's just not worth doing, and I've been trying to run the ball, but he's been sending pressure the entire game. I mean, I could be passing it on him, but I really do want to run the ball, so even though I know he's sending pressure the whole game, I still want to throw the ball. I still want to run the ball a lot, but he's just not giving it to me, so we punt the ball there. Like I said, I could easily be passing it, but... I don't know. I, I just wanted to force the ball. Hope, I just wanted to see what Trenton could do. That was the whole point of playing with the Colts. See what Trenton could do. And don't see... Th this will wor never work, okay? Look at that sideline pick, though. Two feet on, like, inbounds. They're beautiful there. Vaughn somehow makes the catch that some wide receivers can't even make. That was just a very bad read, first of all, to force that because I was on it the whole time. But the pick was absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, one thing I didn't really care about was the fact that he was, like, leaving the running back or the fullback, depending on, like, what personnel package I had out there he was sending so much pressure that the running back would be wide open every single play that time I definitely didn't pick up Richardson being wide open but the throw to T.Y. was beautiful because Trent picked up a block and then someone else picked up a block I'm not sure who and we got in the end zone there and I think that's T.Y. second touchdown pass of uh, second touchdown catch of the game and this game is pretty much out of reach so um I'm probably going to be uploading a video Sunday, not too short. I might try to get you guys the um, Falcons-New England Sunday night matchup. I'll see if I can do that because I got to actually play that. I'm not sure I'll have time to play that. And then Sunday, I'll rather actually be watching the games, watching the Red Zone channel or the Red Zone stream, whatever the hell comes first before playing Madden. So, you know, I might just... I'm not sure what I'll do about that. You guys will see Sunday what happens. I'll probably be bringing a video. I'm just not sure what game I'll be putting up. I got a few games I could show. So we'll see what happens when the time comes. Right now, this guy's time is running out. He's down 17. He's moving the ball, but the t clock is ticking on him. And that was a dangerous throw there. Second time this happened, where the ball gets deflected high in the air. But my guys can't make the play. But uh, I believe Miles Austin got injured again. That might KO him out for the game. Second down, he just throws a drag out, which I'm cool with. You know, you just throw whatever the hell you want. Just don't get in the end zone. That's all I really care about. And here, third down three. I'm trying to experiment. I'm pretty sure I'll try to bring some pressure there. Nothing really happened. And next play, he runs the ball in with Murray. I was kind of expecting him to pass it, and he ran it. So, you know, whatever. And I don't even did he onside the ball here. I don't think he did. Yeah, he didn't onside the ball. I'm not sure why. I guess it's uh, something about respecting the commentator you're playing against, which is cool, you know. At the same time, I would onside the ball no matter who the hell I'm playing against in that situation at least. And here, you know, like I said, a rig match. I could run the clock out, but I'm just going to throw a few plays there. That should have been interception, intercepted, but whatever. This play will pretty much wrap it up. And this guy was, like, messaging me after the game. I like, put this up on YouTube. Just real quick, one thing you don't want to do when you're playing the commentator, don't tell them after the game to put it up on YouTube because usually they won't. Today, I put it up because I... Play this game just to get the Trent Richardson gameplay. Otherwise, I definitely would have not have just because he said put this up on YouTube. But um, that'll do it for this game. Hope you guys liked the video. Like the little tip I gave you guys in the future when you're playing against me or any other commentator. Subscribe for more Man 25 gameplays like this, and I'll catch you guys next time.